things in it that are complicated, but you don't really come across them very often. It gets pretty crazy, pretty loud, but it's hopefully all pretty friendly. And you see, like, the older kids get along pretty well with the younger kids, because it kind of brings them all together. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a trading card game based off of a series of Japanese manga created by Kazuki Takahashi in 1996, which quickly changed into a childhood anime cartoon 90s kids would remember in 1998. It's time to I remember that the characters did not know how to play the game. Uh, well, I like the TV show growing up, but so not so much anymore, so it got me into the game. Yu-Gi-Oh! became a hit. And soon after its release, Konami created a new game in 1999, the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game. Unfortunately, like all childhood games, Yu-Gi-Oh! started to die. Then in 2006, Yu-Gi-Oh! was reborn by a YouTube user named Little Karibo, who started up a parody series of the show. Wait a minute, did you just summon a bunch of monsters in one turn? Yeah, so? That's against the rules, isn't it? Screw the rules, I have money! Armed with Windows Movie Maker and a sense of humour, Little Kuribo went out onto the internet and re-sparked interest into the show and card game. Suddenly Yu-Gi-Oh! was back on television, back in stores, and had a large group ready to play the game. This was the resurrection of Yu-Gi-Oh! The Yu-Gi-Oh! card game is built around three different types of cards. Monsters, spells, and traps. Monsters are used as the main attack and defense power of a player's deck. Spells and traps are mainly used to strengthen the player's defense or attack power, or limit or weaken the opponents. Each one of these types goes into more detail and complexity. Uh, you sort of pick it up as you go along. So, at the start it's a bit daunting learning all the rules. Once you, uh sort of start playing a lot, you sort of pick up your yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh! has become a popular hobby and has also turned into a source of income. Players can play for fun, or they can play for money. Some people will make a living off buying and selling cards, or playing against others. Competitions for this game are ranged from smaller stores and shops to hugely massive competitions that run nationals. In fact, the winners and the best players at the Nationals get to compete in the World Championship. I'm the owner here, so I pretty much do everything. Um, as far as what's going on here today, I organise and run the tournaments and promote it to help all the kids get in and play the games and have a bit of fun. It's a Swiss tournament, so what that means is first round all the players play off against each other and it's a random draw but then after that it will put the top players against the top players and the bottom players against the bottom players so you'll get people with the same skill levels playing together which is what allows you to play some of the younger kids in with the older kids in the same tournament so very quickly they'll all be kids and playing the kids the more experienced players end up playing each other and so it's a good way it gets a good mix of it all through and we run about four rounds and we run that through the day and um, yeah it's a good experience for, for them. At the moment we're running them twice a month. Um, they'll be on the uh, second and last Saturday so it's a fixed event so they can just come down any time. As you can see Yu-Gi-Oh is anything but dead. Since it came back it's become a huge game played by thousands if not millions of people around the world. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a friendly and easy to learn game, which you can spend a good deal of time playing without having to look away from a screen. I hope you've enjoyed this short documentary. I'll see you next time.